Hey guys, it's Shaylin. I'm here today with another writing video. So today I'm going to be following up on a kind of series that I've been doing for like several years on my channel where I just rapid fire run through a bunch of different short fiction tips. There have been three previous installments. I'll leave all of those linked in the description, but I have collected seven more short story tips. I know only seven this time. The point of these tips isn't to say every single short story does this because that's not the case. You're going to find plenty of short stories that don't do all these things. It's impossible to implement all of these tips in every short story. These are just things that over the process of writing a lot of short stories, I've kind of just realized can often be helpful. Like if I'm stuck and I'm trying to troubleshoot a short story, one of these things might be the key. So this isn't to say every short story should do all of these. It's just to say here's a collection of little tips from all of them. Take what benefits your story because definitely not all of them will benefit every story. Short stories are simple creatures. They thrive off simplicity, off efficiency. You can't do too much. But these are all just things that I come back to and have helped me in various short stories. So my first tip is to solidify the concept. I have talked about this tip before in other videos, but that's just because I think it's so beneficial. This is something I see a lot in the slush pile as a slush reader where sometimes the story just doesn't have a clear concept. As the reader, I feel very disoriented. I don't know what I'm reading or why I'm reading it, especially with a short story. Oftentimes you just read it in a magazine or in a collection. There is no back jacket to tell you what you're about. Like you're going in with no knowledge. And so if there's no clarity of what the story is about, sometimes you can get like halfway through a story and be like, what am I reading? Where is this going? And it can be quite disorienting. If possible, I think a lot of stories benefit from having a really clear, even sometimes a statement, if not a statement, you know, it just being clear through the situation um, of the concept very early on. So, you know, I did a video a little while ago where I broke down the story Los Angeles by Ling Ma, which is a great short story and is a story that conceptually is about a woman whose hundred ex-boyfriends all live in her house with her. And obviously through that we explore some thematic stuff and it's about memory and healing and domestic violence, but that is like the concept of the situation. And that is established in a sentence in the first paragraph. It's like my hundred ex-boyfriends live with me. She really clearly establishes the concept. So we're immediately grounded and oriented within the story and we know what we are reading. And this is so helpful because if the reader gets like deep into a story and they're just like, where am I going? What is going on? Your story may not have a clear direction and it can feel, it's hard for the reader to invest if they don't know what they're even investing in. So I would definitely recommend, you know, either having a statement that clarifies the concept or just having the concept to be very clear from the situation in the first scene. It's just really beneficial and um, it's something that I think is a benefit to a lot of short stories. So building off that, if you want a little idea on how to structure a short story, and this definitely doesn't work for all stories, I think if you're trying to figure out, if you're trying to unlock in your brain, like how am I supposed to st structure a short story? You can look at really basic essay structure. And I actually have a whole video on this, so I'll leave a link to that in the description um, if you want to learn more about this, but I'll touch on it here. You know, really basic essay structure that you may have been taught in school is really easy to wrap your mind around. And we can kind of take the same idea and apply it to a short story. So, you know, you used to open with what would be the introduction in an essay, and that's going to be our inciting incident. That would have a thesis statement, which is going to be our, our concept statement, you know, solidifying the concept. And then the body paragraphs with your different arguments in a short story, that's kind of the escalation of conflict, unpacking the character's interiority. And then you would have a conclusion, which in a short story is kind of, you know, the story's climax, which is where we're going to answer this core question of the story or have some kind of revelation or movement in the character. Obviously this doesn't work for all short stories, but if you're trying to approach short fiction structure and you have no idea how or where to begin, I think this is a really easy way to look at the structure of a short story in a way that I think can be applied pretty widely to short fiction. Obviously not in every case. Short stories can have really weird, interesting structures. But um, I do think that this can be a really helpful way to look at it. The next tip is one that I think applies in like novels as well, but it's to think about cornering or trapping your characters. A lot of the time with short fiction, we have a character who is some kind of weird internal thing. And that weird internal thing can be a lot of things. It can be some weird belief they have. It can be unresolved something, unresolved feelings. It can be weird desires that they have. They have some internal thing, which can be a whole range of things. A lot of the time in a short story, what we're trying to do is explore and unpack that weird internal thing and maybe like reveal it, shed light on it. Think about how you can put your character in a situation that is cornering them, that is cornering them in that weird internal messiness thing that they have, whatever it may be. Putting them in a situation where they have no choice but to face their flaws or desires, but maybe they do have a choice in how they face it can be very compelling. You know, this can be literal cornering, like if they're stuck in a location with people where they have to face 
whatever, or it can be more of an emotional cornering. But I think this is a really great way to make your story feel urgent, um, is to think about cornering the character in a way where they have to act, but they have no choice in the light being shed on whatever it is that's deep down. My next tip is don't try to do too much. Short stories, they're simple creatures, you know? A short story is a form of compression. It is a form of efficiency. The opposite of a novel. Novel is the form of richness and complexity. It can be quite languid and you can go off on little tangents. Just take your time. And that's kind of the beauty of the novel. Whereas the beauty of the short story is in its compression and its efficiency and its directness in a way. Even if the story is very subtle, even if the story is very complex, that being done in a very compressed, efficient format. So it can be easy in short fiction to try and take on too much. And what you're essentially doing is just writing a novel, but in 30 pages, 20 pages, and it just doesn't work. Most short stories that are excellent aren't excellent because they do every single, they do a million things. They're excellent because they do one thing really well. They have a very interesting trait of a character that they explore. They have a really interesting choice that they build up to. Most short stories, they kind of like, they do one thing really, really well and everything else in the story is also well done, but it's done in support of that thing. It's not done separate from that thing. It's not like, oh yeah, it was a sprawling epic with so many interesting subplots and so many characters and they all had such distant backstories. Like that's a novel. In a short story, it's like we have one really interesting thing that we're doing really well and everything else is in like direct support of that or it's kind of like technically invisible, right? Like the structure, it's not something that we're directly thinking about. So it's not detracting. Try to do too much. You can end up with almost like weird bulges to the short story stuff that kind of is just a tangent that really sticks out. And maybe we feel like it's adding complexity, but it's really just a side idea. And if we can just whoop, chop that off, we end up with like this very clean, efficient, beautiful short story. And when you have a short story like that, it's so lovely when it just works and there's nothing extraneous and every sentence is really for a purpose. So I'd say, yeah, don't try to do too much. A short story doesn't have to do everything. And this can be an impulse for newer short story writers because you're coming from maybe a novel background. Um, I remember always trying to do way too much in my short stories, have so many characters and they all had such complicated backstories. And it's like, we don't need to know everything about everything, but we just want to do one thing really, really well and just like knock it out of the park. Tip number five is to develop your conflict in a way that maximizes tension. When you're developing the concept, and you, can, you should do this in a novel as well, um, this is just great fiction writing, but in a short story, think about how you can make little tweaks to the, the concept that maximize the tension. So let's say you're writing a story about a woman whose husband has just left her and you want her to have an interaction in the story to be based around a relationship with another character. Maybe originally this character is just a stranger that she meets, but there's nothing to really unpack there. And so you think, okay, it's an old friend she runs into. Maybe there's more to work with. They have an existing relationship and maybe some something unresolved that can be unpacked. But then you think, okay, maybe it's not just a friend. Maybe it's someone that she used to hook up with in college. Maybe they used to hook up around the same time that she was meeting her husband. Or maybe it was when her and her husband, maybe they had an on off relationship. Maybe Maybe it was in an interim of when they had broken up. Now suddenly there's so much more to explore in relation. All these things are starting to bounce off each other and create so much more tension, right? Little or major tweaks to the relationships between characters can really change the tension and really up the tension and make the story feel way more urgent and compelling and give you so much more to dig into. The next tip is to manifest the thematic or emotional in the physical. They're like a balance of clarity and subtlety. It's a balance of what are you gonna say and what are you gonna show, but never state, right? And I think sometimes for that stuff that we just wanna show, but it's never gonna be stated, it can we can manifest it in the physical detail of the story. You know, I had a short story where the characters, the main character had this really deep fear of sin. I'm turning it into a novel, so even more so in the novel, but you see the beginnings of in the short story. All of the characters are constantly cleaning themselves. Like they're always bathing. One of the characters lives in a bathroom. Like they're constantly brushing their hair, washing. And it's never, like the story, it would be weird if the story concretely tied those things two together, but we feel this desire to be clean throughout the story. And in a story that is thematically very much about wanting to be clean, of sin and to be like sinless and pure and good and new and unmarred. We can see this manifesting through the character's actions and that's never stated. Like it's never going to be stated, oh, and I love to bathe all the time. It's just something that the characters are frequently doing as like a backdrop to the scenes. And I think it's a, a good way to manifest emotional in the tangible. And finally, remember that short stories are 
are often more about the past than the present. So in a novel, we often meet a character who maybe is flawed, probably is flawed, and they go through a long journey and they have complexes that are unpacked and there's a lot to say about them, they go through this big arc. In a short story, we kind of catch up to a character in a very specific window of time with a character who's already an interesting piece of work, someone who there's a lot to say about. And then we're just viewing them in this subtle, small situation that shines a light on that. Whatever it is that they have deep down that I've, I've talked about the video, they have something deep down, some weird desire, some weird complex, some weird belief, some whatever it is that is interesting and probably kind of strange, whatever it is, we're trying to shine a light on that. So we catch up with this character in a way that we're just gonna shine a little light on that. Very small point of this character's journey. But I think it's good to remember that as a result, the scenes in a short story are often not just about what's happening in the present. They're often much more manifestations of what has happened in the past and everything that has brought the character to this psychological point that they are, right? So in a novel, we, we focus more on this clear forward progression of story, whereas the forward progression in a short story is often more down. Like we're not always moving forward, we're kind of moving down where each story progress, each scene progresses the story in a way that adds depth. Because we don't often have this clear endpoint goal that we're moving towards, we're just slowly moving towards a point of unpacking, unraveling, revealing, and so we have to, with each scene, kind of go deeper and deeper and deeper and draw the character closer to this point as well. So thinking about each scene as kind of a manifestation more of the past than just what's happening in the present, whereas you, which you might see in a novel with that clearer sense of plot and causality. The causal chain, the plot development in a short story is so subtle, it's usually very within a character. And not always, but it's so rare to have a plot-driven short story because short stories are so short, right? But what short stories are a beautiful vehicle for is to reveal a character in an impactful but subtle way. And so thinking about each scene not progressing an external plot, but progressing this internal unpacking until we get to a point where we've gotten deep enough into the character and the character has been cornered enough that they can maybe make a little ch a choice that reveals them, some, that, that little reveal can Those are my short story tips. Like I mentioned, I'll leave the other videos in this series linked below. I also have a whole playlist on short fiction because I just love talking about short fiction. So that is also linked in the description if you just want more short story content because I do have a lot more short fiction related videos than just these series of tips. So that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.